Bill with Bill's Never Ending Projects. Today we're gonna, I'm gonna, well I'm 68 years old and I played bass but I uh, practice guitar all the time trying to self-teach myself, uh, learning things from others while I played bass uh, in 1982 and using what they told me and then to take it further, uh, well, at least I tried for years to equal them. Uh, they were good. My first band was pretty good. So, uh, first, second, and third had some of the same people. First band, and so the, and then, uh, then when I hooked up with a, a friend, where we did something off and on for the next few years, that was pretty good too. Uh, and at one point, I got to switch from bass to guitar for a year in a classic rock band that wasn't called classic back then. Um, so uh, I thought I would do some preaching on some of the things that I learned for people that are just average Joe and uh, an average an average Joe that wants to uh, to learn guitar. Uh, and yes, having your guitar set up here where the strings aren't way up in the air when you're new uh, is pretty important. So maybe even the first thing you could do is learn to set up a guitar. Uh, first, first of all, guitars weren't this cheap. They weren't. There weren't so many people mass producing them. Uh, back in the 70s and early 80s as there is now and they just definitely uh, you couldn't get a quality one for 150 bucks even a hundred bucks used or something I'm talking about used prices maybe there's a quality new one for 150 bucks but I don't know but uh, so it shouldn't be hard to pick up a guitar and just try to pick up one that set where the strings are uh, where you can hit it down here and you don't hear a bunch of noise where it's catching and you can hit it in the middle and you can hit it up here and uh, same with the bass side and whenever they fret out it's always right in here because these are the ones that fret first so There. I got this out of my case. I haven't had it out of the case, and I've been using a different guitar, so. So, uh, so you do want to learn some about guitars before you start, so that you can have have uh, it set up halfway decent, or buy one that's already set up. So what you do want to do is. At first, I guess you'll have to use a tuner to get it near where they go and realize uh, and realize that and realize that uh, when you bring them all up to, you could use a piano and do it by ear. This one's going to be the first one's going to be E. I'm talking from the big one going towards the little one. Big one, so where your chest is the first one you come to when you come down going towards from your head to your legs is going to be the thick one they're going to get littler until you get furthest towards your feet and they're little uh so when tony iomi and black sabbath heard his uh the ends of his fingers uh he had to put he got them partially snipped off and he had to put on uh, thimbles to play, and he had to put leather on the end of the thimbles. He found out they still hurt, so he had a string company make them nine gauge strings, and and so forever on, you didn't have to play with tens. They, they call the gauge strings from the little one, whatever the little one is. This is a nine, and they end on 42. So the nine gauge. Uh, 
forever from then on you could get light gauge strings that don't hurt so bad to stretch and uh and so that's what i suggest uh you don't need any more uh you don't you don't need any more things coming up against you to learn guitar than than you need so if you got tens on it switch it to nines and then uh use I'll show you here. Where are we pointing now? Okay, I got a tuner sitting right here. Sitting right here on some tail books. Keep a short cord for your tuner. This is a, a chromatic tuner. It doesn't tell you when you're low or high, but does light up when you're right on, or close to being on. And so you do got to know the name of your strings to use a chromatic tuner. Uh, so we're going to be using the E, A, G, B, D, E. So... Uh, Undo your card from your guitar, drop it, put in the short card you have on your tuner, uh, this is considering that you got your 9 gauge strings on and they're tuned up to medium tight, bring them the rest of the way up using one of these. And of course you got to have your volume on to get the signal. And then you got to have your tuner on. They have switches. So here, I'm going to get that zoomed in on this. Okay, it says I'm sharp for some reason. Let's try the A. D's on. Okay, A has to be loosened a little. So whenever you loosen it, you got to take them and you got to take them and guys, I guess I got to unzoom to do this. You got to take your strings that you've loosened and you got to pull up on them slightly. Yeah, once in a while they'll break. It's the price you have to pay. So, because when you loosen them, you got to tighten it back up again. Okay. Now back to the tuner. Uh, I don't know why we we're still sharp, so I'm stretching it again. Turning it real slowly. I passed it, so now I gotta stretch it again. Turn, uh, I guess that means uh, to turn your turning peg slower, a little at a time. And sometimes maybe your stretch will bring it in the tune. Okay, I stretched it and it's still in tune, so I'm not gonna back it up. Oh, there it did back up just a hair. Oh, that's how touchy they are sometimes. I'll back it up and then stretch it just a tad. And do your E first because sometimes doing your E, since it pulls the hardest, uh, can change the rest of them. Almost went in. So now you go back and check the E. Okay, so we got the E. We got the A. The D seems to be almost done. I'll just stretch it a little. It's in. 
I don't know how they all went sharp again. I don't know if this is the best toner. So I gotta stretch it. Okay, it's in. Stretch the last two because they're in, but I had to back them down, so now I gotta stretch it again. Professionals uh, that are really big time have a person hired just to do this. And they have more than one guitar, so they always keep one guitar tuned ahead. Now we go back and check the E and the A. Okay, this is good enough. So always shut your tuner off, save your 9 volt battery. And then plug, plug back your guitar back into your amp one. Okay, I'm going to pause this while I turn it back around. Okay, now, now, now that it's tuned, you have to have it tuned. We just tuned a normal E, or A. Uh, Van Halen plays an E flat. Steady E, here's E, 7th fret, E flat, he tunes his E, so he's getting an E, it, he's getting an E flat when he plays E, meaning he tuned it down a half a step, and Motley Crue tunes it down two half steps, all their songs are, so when they play an E, they're really getting a, a D, so, and some Black Sabbath songs, not on the first two albums, but uh, are tuned to uh, C sharp, three half steps down. So when they're at E, it would sound like this. But we're just doing uh, normal tuning, E. So then the next thing to do is once you got your guitar in tune, you could check your action then. And... Uh, this is all the farther I gotta push it down on this one. Not much. I don't know. I think a credit card would go in there. That's about it. So. And then once you use your tuner, you always check anyway because it seems like there's always something you gotta adjust. That was right on. Right on. Turn, turn that one a little. So once you do it where you just go across going, you got it. You can't go in between the frets because it'll put it out of tune. Listen. Hear it wobble? Because the frets are up high, and if you push down, you're bending it out of tune. So you do it on top of the fret, or close to it. Then you do the... This is an A at the fifth fret. So you push it down, and, and the one next to it's the A string. So then you go... You're, you're getting a, a harmony of two A's. Then you do it... The next one, this just happens to be each one going across matches the string next door. So the, the D strings after the E A, so it's E A D. So then you push down the fifth fret of the uh, on the A string, fifth fret on the A string, and you get and you get a D. And the next door is a D open. So yeah, if you have your finger slightly off, it'll pull out a tune. Like I said, in the middle, you can pull it down. And then, only one that's different is when you get to the G string, you have to back up one to equal the B. And then you go back up for the, 
So, and now the next way to do it, when you get a little more experience, you use harmonics. Harmonics are when you just touch the string and you don't push it down, and then you pick it with your pick. So, this is a note. This is a harmonic. So then you go. You use the harmonic on the fifth. And on the seventh, instead of going straight across, now I use the seventh. And you do it the same way all the way over. You listen to see if they match. With the harmonic, you can see if they match better than with just pushing a note down. Especially when your ear is new and you're not used to it waving. So... And then this one is a half-step harmonic. Some people say there isn't one there, but there is. And then you come back up on the uh, last two and do it fifth, seventh harmonic. And when you're doing it, keep your hand kind of off the strings, because I'm going to teach you to mute the strings when you're playing, where you either you either put one finger down and hold yourself up and see so, so you're not just freehand it, or you lay your, your palm on it and do it, and maybe your finger and your palm. Uh, so uh, with your palm, you control how loud it is, because, listen. So it's much softer when you put your palm on it to, so you don't just stay freehanding up in the air. Like you see some people strumming an acoustic. So you decide you're in tune. You decide you know how to tune. You know that the strings are E. You know that your first strings are uh, E, A, D, G. E A D G B E. So uh, E A D G B. Where's the little E on here? I was using this chord wheel. I don't know. Uh, this is some of the things I picked up. So many things. So many things when I was self-teaching myself. when I was in 82 uh, playing in 79, 78, there were hardly no tab books, and if there were, they were in piano. You had to read music to do them, and they weren't right. So the band told me to do it by ear. So uh, when you want, when you're starting out, you do need a guitar that, where you press down. So where we did the harmonics, the fifth and the seventh on the other string, that's the power chord. And you're playing an A and an E. The nut up here, with nobody putting their hand on it, if you play them all open, just... It's called an arpeggio, where you're just using all the strings and you're just, it just happens to be the nut that the string lays on up here before it goes up to the winders, uh, is, is fingering it for you. So then you could practice some arpeggio picking without even using your left hand, just if you're right handed, without using your left hand, just going. <laughs> first time I picked all six and then I picked after I did the sixth one I hit the fifth one and it was on the way back or you could pick where you're doing one two three four the E A D G and come back
see without having to zoom it. Uh, that's arpeggio picking. And so when you learn to do chords, like the E minor, where you only push down the second fret on the A string and the second fret on the D string, you go. That's just taking a classical C and moving it up. And picking it all four and then all four, the down, you know. But not starting on the E because the classical C doesn't start on the E unless you put your other finger in. I'm not. I'm doing the starting on the E variation. Anyway, uh, there's picking patterns to learn, obviously, uh, but we're not up to there yet. Uh, we're at the power chord, where it's the same as the harmonics. So, these are movable. This one up here, this E minor, it's not movable. That's where it is. Okay? Or the E major. is the E minor, and you're pushing down on the first fret of the G string to add a note. And then if you just jump that over, you're on A minor. Now, the major chord is movable. Same over on A minor. Okay, just like that C was movable a little bit, because it's got an open string, so once it don't sound good, then you would say it's not movable. Uh, then you got your classical D, which is uh, acoustic people play it like uh, that, where uh, they're doing the uh, G string and the e, little E string, and then the D note on the B string, third fret, they're doing it like that. In rock, I kind of, I bar it, and then I bring my uh, suck index, or middle finger in, and just, uh, I just do that. And... Okay, so, uh, you learn the top chords that go across, E major, E minor, D. D minor. That's just using the, uh, instead of doing the D like this, you, you put your index down on the first fret. That happens to be an F, and then <clears throat> skip a string and put your middle on the A. And then bring your third finger down and put it on the uh, D. That's on the B string, third fret. You got the regular D. You got this D. You got that A. And just like the E minor, you can do an A where you're just using a couple. And the so now you got a tune. You heard a chord. Uh, that's why I was talking about a chord, because now you know the power chord. The power chord is movable. Every fret. Okay, so you, you know the power chord's movable. You know, some of these classical cowboy chords are not uh, so much movable right away, at least we'll say they're not. But they are. Here's the F. It moves. Uh, the D moves. This is D. 
14th fret, this is D fret, second fret. It moves, but the aid. The A sort of moves. The E sort of moves. The E minor sort of moves. But there'll be some, uh, like, let's say you did a. Anyway, that's enough of the top chords for now. I just wanted to show you, so we're back to learning to uh, straighten your neck out. When you get a power chord, when you're doing the A, fifth fret, and the A, uh, the A on the E string, fifth fret, outside, and you do the uh, two frets up on the A string, next, next string on, that's a power chord. They might have mentioned that in the School of Rock movie. It's the first and the fifth. Uh, if you're, when you do a scale, a major scale in A, you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you take those notes to whichever note they were on. One, two, three, four, five. So the one in the power chord is the five. That's why they call it the, the five chord. So in a School of Rock movie, Black said, uh, don't add, just use the one five. He was telling him to add the uh, six or seventh or something other. Maybe the third, I don't would know. would be a note on the uh, D string. The intervals. Makes it a triad. Uh, when you do two notes, you're just getting like a power chord, a five or other, another formation. I mean, if you did it like this, it'd be a four, I guess. That don't sound good, but if you did the first and the, uh, the first and the fourth would make a note. Now it's not a fifth anymore. That's a five chord. This is a four chord. But I call those uh, double stops. It's a violin term, I guess. And if you're just doing two notes, which you do that a lot in rock, you just do two notes, you don't got to do this whole arpeggio uh, where you're barring all the way across for a full bar chord. Uh, unless you're doing a pretty piece, uh, you're just moving these things around at lightning speeds. So, uh, we're still trying to get to set up the guitar, and I'm trying to use the power chord for a way to tune. So, one way was one note at a time. The, the string adjacent to it, open, is that note. So, you use that, except when you get to the, to the G string to do the B, you got to back up one. Not here, here. And then you come back. Then you can do it with a power chord, or, uh... But some people say it don't work here. use a power chord for maybe this one where it don't work so well with harmonic. So all you do is you use your two string power chord and you go across going and if it would wave I'm just going to bend it so I don't have to put it back out of tune but but you can also do that when you do a terrible job at pushing your power chord down so instead of sounding like this it'll sound like this. And that's what you'll be doing when you tune. You'll hear it, it'll be way out. So instead of sounding like this, it'll sound like this. And then you tune it up with your peg until you get you get it even. So when it's when it's like this. Turn until it quits waving, but you don't want to go past it and break them. 
So, uh, you know, when you're trying to do your A, your, uh, your A and it sounds, first it's here, then it's here. I mean, you start out way down here. And you work up to it and you try to hear when you're there and you don't look past. So let's say you've used all the ways. So once you do it with power chords, you hear how they wave. You hold it. You just say, how does that sound? Is it waving? And is it because I'm off the fret? There, earlier I was off the fret, now I'm not. So that doesn't wave. It doesn't wave. Okay, so uh, you learn to tune like that too. And then if you can do it with power chords like that, guess what these things equal when you uh, do them open? Let's say you do the first two open. That's a power chord. Let's say you do the next two open. You hear how that's riding and sounds like a power chord? It's because it is a power chord. And you do the next two open. And then you learn the names of these when they're open. This one here I just did, that equals a G at the third fret. These two that you do here to two. You got to back up uh, this one that you do at the. Uh, and then the last two, you can, you can do those open. You're getting uh, the last two ringing open. makes a power chord and then so uh you don't have to worry about putting your fingers on them and making them go crooked uh the only way that won't work is if the intonations uh the only way that won't work is uh when your harmonics are off that has to do with tuning uh so let's go back to the tuning now and now that you know how to tune every which way so when you when you got your guitar in tune and you look down the thing and you look down at the eyeball it or you put a straight edge on what you want is you don't really want it perfectly straight i took a a straight edge from a hardware store five bucks or something and i cut a foot or so off so it would fit on the neck it was about three feet long i cut it to about two feet or something you can put it on here uh, you don't want it to be perfectly straight. I mean, this is what the strings tuned up now. Uh, or with the strings completely off before you put them on. Maybe that's what I'm talking about, but because that's usually when I check it. You don't want it perfectly straight. You want a little bit of it looking like a smile. Because you wouldn't want it going that way uh, towards the back of the neck because obviously then the strings would hit they would fret out so much quicker you want a little bend coming up up towards uh like a smile like the smile here you want it to come up a little because with this up and i'm talking about the frets of course i'm just using this hump so with this up a little then when it goes down here to meet that bridge obviously if this is helped up a little it'll sail right over these first few frets uh that you're not fretting without giving that metal sound hitting so that's why that's why they say yeah you want a straight neck but then you want to give it you want to take your truss rod and give it like a eighth turn or quarter turn uh and then uh and then try it it's possible that uh, it's possible that you have to loosen your strings up to do that and then retune it. <clears throat> and if you have a whammy bar, I guess you could just uh, hold up on the whammy bar, which loosens all the strings. If you had somebody there, I don't know. You could, if you want to try it, where you take this cover off and you. Uh, tighten it a little 
Same as you would tighten a bolt. If you would tighten it a little, uh, then you, uh, and then you, and then you uh, go to your fret that's fretting out, and it doesn't fret out anymore, then you got it fixed by just turning it an eighth or a quarter turn, put your cover back on, you're done. Uh, now you quit the, the terrible sound, and you can even play a mouth, and you don't hear any metal. And that's what's going on here, it's not bottoming out. This thing's been set up right since the day I got it. Uh, somebody in Seattle set it up. So I bought it from a Seattle guitar shop. It's a lawsuit I've announced. Uh, so uh, then uh, if it's not fretting out, and it was, obviously you uh, fixed it by just putting a little curve to the neck. Otherwise, you would have had to, uh, you would have had to get it to quit fretting out, and then you would have had to start doing a, a bridge adjustment to lift it up or down. But if it, every year you have to adjust the truss sometimes on some guitars because the humidity changes. So over the winter it dries out from the furnace being on and the less humidity. And in the summer it uh, warps a little. So uh, you have to, usually in the spring you have to adjust it. And uh, usually a couple times a year. So once you learn to adjust your neck and keep it, as nice as you can. So if you uh, if you got that little bit of bow in it and it's not going to make it quit fretting, obviously you're going to have to raise it up down here. And uh, again, probably have to loosen your strings to do it. I'm, I'm not an expert on that. So then you want to tune. You want to check your relief by I am down. This all spells the word train. You want to tune. T. T R. You want to check your relief. That's that's that you got a little bit of relief and it's not straight, so it looks like a little bit of a little bit of a curve. It's almost a straight line with it's almost a straight line with just that little tiny little bit of curve. <coughs> then uh, T R <coughs> Then you got uh, uh, what are all the fancy names? Uh, the other thing is, uh, if you change strings or anything, you got the intonation. Uh, this 12th fret, where the nut is, where you play it open. Uh, has to equal pushing down at the 12th fret at the double dots. Right there, it's the double dots. So listen, I'm going. Seems like my E is a little off. So that's when you adjust these in the back, back here. It makes it go ahead or back. You lengthen it or shorten it. Because that's how you make the knot equal the 12th fret. Yeah, so my 12th one needs changed. I'm not going to do it now. <coughs> Uh, needs the length changed. So T R A uh, action. Uh, T R A action. So once you uh, get your reliefs, you have to lift this up and down to get your action set, where you maybe can put a credit card in there. Then you got the intonation. So T R A I intonation is what I was just talking about for the length of the string with those screws. T R A I and an N. Is uh, see how nice it is. You play it.
So that's something about setting it up because really you do need to know how to adjust your guitar Otherwise your strings are going to be harder to push. You're going to hear fret noise and uh, If you're going to change to the nine gauge that I suggested and then you might have to do the intonation when you shorten it or lengthen it to get the 12 fret sound like the nut. So those are all the uh, Those are all the little things about about playing that don't have anything to do with starting to play, really. Uh, so, uh, let's say you don't have a tuner. Then I'm going to give you several records here. Several uh, records here that you can, that you could tune to. As soon as I can uh, see how to, I'm going to put this in pause for a second. There it is, we got the turntable in the picture. Okay, we're going to first go with uh, Ted with the Cat Scratch, uh, Cat Scratch Fever album. And Cat Scratch Fever's an A. So let's just try that one. After Ted finishes, he, he's doing A, B, C. Bass just went and hit an air. That means you can tune now to it. And now the bass player is playing an A steadily. So. So what you want to do is you hit your second string. Not the. your uh, second string, not the E, the second one. That's, that's the A that matches it. Not this one, that one. Second string only. Now listen how it it goes right with it. thing better than that uh, is to get one on an album where it just lets one note ride and that is better we're gonna do that here with this fog hat song uh, what I do with the album jacket uh, it's, it's I just want to make love to you intro <laughs> close so start it over again and then keep listening to it and see how you know you got to fine tune it I got it now I can go back 
to my other string that was in tune and hit the harmonics and see if I'm right on. It's pretty much the same. No, it's not on. But that, that either means my tuner's not right, the turntable's going slow or fast. So uh, this belt drives are the best because there's no adjustment. And if the belt's good, usually they're right on. This one's a drug drive. But I'm pretty sure that... So I look at the uh, adjustment and it's not moving. They're both... They're both even. So now I'm going to see if I didn't get it right. Or if... Okay, I think I was a little low. So now let me see if they match. tuners off or fog hat play that song out of tune okay let me go over to the tuner I'm gonna put it on pause to see if I'm not matching the tuner uh, the tuner said it was low but that's baloney because I matched fog hat and I can't believe fog hat did this record out of tune so now I'm gonna set up a little keyboard I heard keyboards always are in, so now I'll set up a keyboard or I'll try a different song and see if then maybe Foghead did do that one out of tune. Okay, I gotta believe that uh, that Foghead, I just want to make love to you album, they tuned off when they recorded it. I tried a second tuner, I never did go get another turntable or a keyboard, because I could throw another turntable right on this amp I'm fixing to work on. Uh, and then just plug it into a Ono 2 or unplug that one and then see if the two turntables match by putting my guitar on. But uh, since that other tuner, everything matched except the A string I just tuned to that album. So now let me put on uh, the first Aerosmith album. Uh, Walking the Dog, it's the last song, or, oh no, this is the Train Kept to Rollin' album. I want Walking the Dog because it starts out in E, so let me pause this till I find it. Well, we'll try the Train Kept to Rollin' album. I don't see the other one. my turntable. Uh, I'm a, that didn't match my E. Uh, I'm gonna go grab another turntable. <laughs> because I tuned the A down, then I can bring it back up. So my little experiment would be different if I, I'm not going to tune my, yeah, I guess the E might be in there, so. Here I put on ACDC Hell Spells, Brian Johnson. Uh, the A is off, so now I can bring it back up right. So that means that Foghat song is just tuned lower. The bass would be doing A, so I'd be tuning to the bass. can 
because I'm at A already. Okay, I'm out of the twilight zone. I uh, brought down a keyboard and I played A. So it's off with the tuner, it's off with the piano. So I gotta believe that that's what happens when you do it by ear, uh, and you're not you're not some musical genius uh, or even average. For some reason, my ear said I was on. Either that or that since this is a direct drive and when you shut it off and you put it back on, it could have went to a different speed for a second. Uh, but, but now... But it was me. Had to be. Uh, I didn't think Fog Hat was on. Uh, See what does with this. Okay, so we're on, and, and it, uh, so I, it's, uh, it's just an art to tune to an album. It means you can tune without a tuner is what it means. So you're usually either tuning to E or A on albums. On that one, it's A. Let's pause and put on one that's an E. Here's the Black Stabbers. We'll start War Pigs with E. You could use uh, that album. It's doing E and then D, and then it's back to E, and then D, but it rides on E, you know, like. They, they strike E several times, and then, and then uh, they let it ride on D. So, uh, there's one. Let me get another one. Paranoid, you can turn to. That's E. D. That's E and D. And they even, uh, and they even, uh, ride on D later in the song. So we go, we go, uh, after the intro of going, they do that four times and they start going. Okay, so that's E going down picking. They're not just riding, so you can still tune to the down pick. Just make like they're riding. And then go, uh, you know. And, but later in the song, they do go. So you could go to that part for the little bridge <coughs> and where they do ride. Sin City, uh, ACDC, I wonder if that's a normal, uh, I know it's a normal turning, but I wonder if they do it the right, who they were tuned to right that day.
doesn't sound right. I think they tuned off that the there are some ACDC ones from uh, Bon Scott days that don't match right. But you get the idea on tuning to an album. Okay, next up, playing. Every song has a piece that you have to figure out. So right away, uh, so right away when you're tuning by ear and you're and you're uh, and you're certain you're in tune with the album and you know they don't tune down and you know they didn't, uh, it's not one of those albums that they uh, weren't in tune when they recorded it, you, uh, you get something to match. And so, uh, like with R, you'll keep pushing on and they start off. And they just, they just do that little. So you would be matching this A. And so once you, when they're playing that, you just ride the A and see how it matches. They're going through the da, 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 da. Not that my voice is going to match it, but. So uh, you get your open A and you match that. Da, 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 da. And then when they move up, of course, you can't match it anymore. So then you get your guitar tuned and you go. And that's pattern one. Every song's got, some of these rocks got like three patterns. So uh, what I call the strumming in the pattern. Uh, the strumming and the pattern I call the little count. The count that if you just can naturally match the rhythm of what they're doing without doing too much about it, then you can just kind of forget about the little count. And the bigger count is how many bars you stay on everything. Like one, two, it, it's right there. It's four, uh, one bar each because you just count to four to get how many, how the length of a bar. So one, two, three, four, three, So uh, that's the other thing you realize right away. Is it a four bar pattern? Almost all 70 rocks a four bar pattern. So you make like those patterns if you want to are boxes, uh, rectangle boxes or square boxes. And you make four of them, one here, one there, one there, and one there. So bar one would be box one, bar two, box two, bar two, box two, bar three, box three, bar four, box four. And then it all comes back around. So you box one, box two, box three, box four. Or call it bar one, bar two, bar three, bar four. Uh, so if it's a four bar pattern, so when you, let's say you just match the A on, keep pushing on, Ario. Let's say you uh, matched it and you got the rhythm. It was it was a, a quick burst, three count burst, and then it went da da and then it did just just a down, and then it went. So that's the little count. So now you know what that was da 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 da, -da. and maybe if you can sound like a guitar, you can go around walking around. Uh, after you put your guitar down and you can go da 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 and then da 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 So what you gotta do is find out what they're doing different in box four. So box one's normal. Box two's normal. It's just a different note. Box three's normal, just another different note. So they finish it normal, number three. Now number four, you stay there, but then you do it different. So here's number three. And then number four will be, so number three is da 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 and then you start number four. Da -da. So you split your uh, shuffle. Normally you do it, you go. You do that down, up, down on one note, but on box four, you stay there and you start at the same, but when you, when you go, when you do your shuffle and you're down after it, 
when you do the one, two, three, the down, up, down, you split it. So you do you do down and then you go down on the B. So they're using uh, on the dot on the fifth, on the dot on the seventh, on the dot on the ninth. So you do just one down coming back of your three count shuffle. So you're splitting the shuffle. Da 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 da. So that's what's different about that. So that's what you got to do with every song. You got to figure out a box four is usually something different. That's how they make up patterns. Let's take a different song. And then, uh, and you got to realize the lead guitar usually is doing uh, something different. He's doing the uh, lead intro. Okay, so let's take a different song, uh, like that Paranoid was, where you go, you're, you're slamming E's, or, it's a B, an E power chord is at the 7th fret, and if you look to see what notes it is, it's E and B, A power chord is A E. E power chord is E B. It's a B. It's the octave of the B. So what you're doing is you're slamming that B octave. Okay. index like you would for a power card and then you just you play it like you're playing a power card like only you slam it you're slamming the B that's called the hammer on and then you go two hammer ons so that's the thing about hammer ons rock music usually use hammer ons and pull offs so hammer ons are attacking if you say you got a good attack, an up attack, it would be, would be talking hammer-ons. See, I'm only picking once. Picking once. The second time is the up attack, slamming. So you just practice that. Try going around, just going across all six going. And come back, going. So, uh, it's a hammer-on, so happens to be to start Paranoid, Black Sabbath 1970, you gotta hammer the B. And then after that, you go, you hammer the, uh, the A to B, and the D to B. Only they don't go. They go. Uh, they don't hammer that last one, so. They make like they're going to go there, and then they make like they're going to hammer it, but instead they go. I think they pick both, and it's D, B. So. four of those, then you just start going E. E down here at the seventh. E down here open. E up here at the twelfth. And then if you were here, you would go here. It'd be E, D, E, G. Or G. So up here you go. So you're at D, so you're going to go E, D, Johnny up here, and you move down to D, just like you would up here. What it is, is you're, you're down picking two bars of E, or Let's see how it is. It's four bars. 
cars. So for box one, two, three, and four, you're just down picking these. And if you wanted to know when the boxes end, count to four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Every one, two, three, four is a bar. And then here it's two bars. And then you go for box three, you go. It's E, D, E. And then you just do a G. Or, times they do it and you know it's in four bar pattern so you go well it's four bars now you're going to do four more so that means it's an eight bar pattern total you're doing four and then you're doing two d's and then for the number three you're going and then for number four you're going so that makes it eight bars every time this this uh, pattern turns around. So. scale of minor, minor pentatonic. So uh, that's what you got to do to figure out. If you were going to figure out that cat scratch fever I was telling you to tune to, uh, it, it's, uh, you would be hearing them go, and you'd be hearing them do that, and so you'd go, so you would go, figure he go, if you were counting, it would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then he goes, one, two, three, four. So for box four, you can go, which is CCBA. It's a four bar riff that turns around, not like Paranoid where it's eight. This is a four bar, so it's just. So, uh, that's what you'd have had to figure out. You'd have had to figure out that they're monkeying around with A, B, and C. And then when they uh, start doing the uh, verse, don't know where I come from. Don't know. I appreciate that, but uh, so uh, this is how you get you into playing. This is what they taught me. There were no tab books back then. You have to put the record on and you have to keep repeating it, repeating it, repeating it until things make sense to you. If and. And everything isn't just with these chords. They're doing 
and stuff like you have to figure out uh so you gotta figure out riffs too so the chords to figure them out when uh if they're going, uh, well, you're going to have to go up and down a little. You get used to hearing D's, you can tell they're on the inside, A's on the outside. And, and then you'll find out that there's a, fu a far three sets. Some of the 80s used to... that inside so now you got three sets of these so now you the inside's pretty high pitched like and you get used to hearing the lower ones these double stops on guitar, they're the uh, power chord using one finger. It's just an arrangement of the notes different. Inversion. Just using a bar. That's a power chord. It's just an easy one because you just bar it. It's a double stop. And when you do, uh, and when you do a double stop where you go one up or one back, like... I call those dyads. Maybe you can use a Y in the name. D Y A D dyad. Or... You can do two finger part ones. Maybe a. Uh... When you're listening to what to play, try to figure out if they're using top chords. They're using arpeggiated stuff. Uh, or if they're using uh, the up and down thing where they go. They go. I call that the rock and roll thing. use one finger just and up here if you just use one finger it's just start with this one. Led Zeppelin does Riff Raff does after they go. your job to play by ear you keep repeating and repeating it to figure out if they're going uh what they're doing they're going and yeah sometimes they're not playing at all 
hard, like they might just be going, they might be getting that G with their thumb or something and going. Whatever, uh, there's all these little tricks to everything, so, uh, but some stuff is truly hard, uh, but what you do is you learn the easy stuff first, ACDC, Angel City. It's all done, you go. There's that rock and roll part. And then just move around to some power chords. times you let up your pressure on the strings and just get the scratch. Anyway, uh, I was just uh, giving a lesson on playing by ear. I think I went long enough. Uh, there's, uh, so if you're first not in tune with an album, you think by ear. Could be your ear. Could be the turntable. You got, you can always try Try a keyboard, and then uh, uh, sometimes when you just go away from the stereo like I did and come back, now your ear puts it right on when maybe before it didn't. So that's the end of my uh, little demo on tuning by ear and having fun playing with rock and roll albums. Doing these riffs where you uh, where you learn to walk around, this would be a quad where you go. This would be a quad where you go four. You just got to get good at doing four and stopping at four. Three would be you end with an up. So. I know you would, after doing fours, you'd want to go down. But what you do is you just think of which way you have to stop. Three, a triple would be, you'd have to stop coming up. It would be down, up. It would be down, Wrong. up, down. So you'd... Triple and down. Quad and up. No, it's a quad where you stop, stop going up. So, you do these quads, you can... You don't have to put your hand on it to do them. You do gotta kind of keep the strings quiet. But keeping the strings quiet with this hand, you put your fingers over ones that you're not using. Use your thumb going one way, use your fingers going the other way, but that's quad, so triplets are. And so when you do triplets, you can do the power chords with them. It's. And a quad is. Remember I said you stopped coming up? That's up. Triple, you stop going down. Happens.
happens pretty quick. Down, up, down. And when you get them moving fast, you can't really see yourself stopping and starting. starts over. And then you take those things I just showed you with the pairs and the triplets and the quads. Uh, and then there's other ones. There's like the five stroke. You used to doing those when you can just call them up when you want them uh, you can use the ones it doesn't seem like much but one is just but it starts out with just one when you do four of those together it's just four of these ones or you kind of accent where the four starts every time or the one So what you do is you take just one of those ones, or a couple of them, and you go, and you put it in front of one. Give me one. Triplet? Okay. Now you got a, a beat that you can make up a song, or you, or you can match an album, because they do that. So, yeah. Give me another one. Uh, three downs? How about one down? One down, and... Uh, a slow one, not a burst. A burst would be three count burst, I mean. How about a slow three count? That's not a burst, where you just go. It would almost equal three downs. But if you're still doing the up and down, it would just be a slow three count burst. So let's say we do it. Then we do a three count burst. And then we just do a slower. We go. I'm just making this up. But you'll find these in classic rock tunes because people put these together when they make up songs. All I did is do one, do a three, and then four, and then three slow ones, three ones. Now we're going to do the one we said where we went. It only instead of going, I went. So, I guess it was easy to do the downs. Make up another one. Uh, how about uh, two sets of four? And I did six downs, so two quads. So that's what the people, when they're not just doing the basics of going, or going, or going, they're mixing them up. They're doing combinations of ones, twos, threes, fours, fives. For all that goes, uh, sevens. Uh, what was that? Yeah. 
Sounds like one, four, five, six. That was a seven. classic rock they're not mixing up too much of that stuff that's more of the 80s and uh but they do use riffs all over where you have to practice going uh, you start with uh quarter notes just going you would call that a chromatic and then when you want to do the box that's kind of here and, and there, you start out wide, and you go uh, medium, 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 then wide again. That's the uh, pentatonic, pentatonic box. So you learn them with uh, quarter notes. And then you, uh, when you get sick of the quarter notes, you do eighth notes. When you get sick of those, you do them with triplets. Do it across the triples and so forth, and then do them with any number that I taught you. Uh, but then you start doing them with pull offs where you go, uh, so uh, up attacks a pull off. You don't have to go three wide, you could go one. Just one and two at first. And so you get some muscles where you can just keep pull-offs going. That's called a trill. It's not pull-offs. It's it's a hammer. It's a hammer and a pull. So you're digging in. That's the hammer. You pick it first with the bar You dig in. And you dig in and pull it off, which jerks it. And then you got to keep the other strings quiet. So. you practice going around doing anything you can think of. Two apart. Two apart going up. Three apart going down. Or just do different pickings for each one. Do different pickings for four, four apart. Stretches. You dig in on this Johnny. Johnny be good. I just call that the Chuck Berry double stop. You're doing a, like a, power, a rearranged power thing by just barring it, but you're doing the E and the B string, the two tiny ones. down is going down but but uh but the pull-offs are pretty important pull off hammer on pull off hammer on pull off Switching bar cards fast. Arpeggiated parts, that's the toughest. 
because you're doing it a pattern. You're, I showed you where you're just going straight down, straight back, but when they get a complicated arpeggio pattern, like, you know, you're you're doing a pattern, you're all over the place, so. But you can, you can practice a piece of it and try to figure out by ear what you're doing, so if you hear, it's an A minor, they're, they're arpeggiating. And that turns into. Slide up, slide down. You can have fun with it, but you got to put the record on and keep repeating it to have fun because you, you're not going to figure out what's going on right away. You're going to learn some of the simplest patterns at first and just try to decide if it's a four bar pattern or what's going on and where it turns around. And then when you get one pattern, there's going to do three average per song, so you got to get used to moving one pattern into the next pattern without it flying. Like if I was doing a PTO song, it went... After they do that enough times, you learn when they change, and then you got to find out the change. The change in that one was... So you would just have to keep trying things till you get that thing. So when they go on. Yeah, F sharp is a different sound. That's what you finally have to realize is they're doing F sharp. You could try other spots. Too high. Still too high. Still too high. Yeah, so the other one would go. They're not doing something quick anymore. Like they're going, they're waiting. They're going. Then they just happen to go. But if you don't go there and try it, so until you try the right spot, you're not going to line it up. But a lot when you're first doing this, there's a lot going on where you think you got it, and then you might think you have a pattern right for a week and. and or a year, and as you get better, you go, oh, I never had that right. Now I know what it is, because now I'm doing, doing something different, you know? And, uh... But these are the stretches. You hold one note, then you go over to the G string, and you stretch that up two frets worth to get back to the same note. Octaves. You're doing a harmony, but it's the same note. But they're uh, one's lower and one's higher, but still, still harmony, I guess. So you get used to listen to harmonies. If you do another, unless you're going to do two A's like I did. You're not going to get much of a harmony because it's the same note. It's just the other one's higher and it sounds cool. That's why they call it octaves. But if you're going to do maybe a, a first and a third. Uh, which one uses octaves? what dyads are. They're, they're different degrees apart. I mean, you're going to have an octave is a one and a one, but it's actually a one and an eighth because there's seven notes in a scale and you're doing the eighth one, the octave. So it's not really a one and a one, it's a one and an eighth. 
this would be a one and a seven. One and a six. One and a five. One and a four. One and a three. One and a two. This is called an extra reach. But that was doing it eight. That was doing it above the octave, so octave would be eight degrees apart. This would be But you get used to matching a couple power notes that are uh, different degrees, not always doing the one five. One four. One three. So, anyway, well, I've given you plenty to learn to do some easy songs by here. My bet, uh, the best, your best bet is to start out with a one pattern song, like uh, taking care of business. just one pattern all the way through and uh, there are some songs like that where they just go can <laughs> I mean, if, the, if another pattern so easy, like, she don't... That was just four crashes. You can hardly count that as a pattern. But it would be a two-pattern song. But Stranglehold is... They use the octave. It's just one pattern, but they do an intro. Uh, but anyway, I'm getting tired. Of, uh, I've done these preaches so many times, and I tell people to count. You want to know how long a bar is? Just go the speed of the music. Like a uh, stranglehold was. If you want to know how many bars this pattern is, it would be <laughs> Kind of the drum beat would be like boom, boom, chick, boom, boom, chick, chick. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> some of them so they like wait for one and two that would be the first bar that'd be the second bar and the third bar would be nothing you just go so riffs you can still count along with riffs it's just going up and down <coughs> with different notes uh, but you can still so if they're going you can still go one, two, three. Well, you see when they wait. But if the 
the record was going, you wouldn't be playing it. You could easily do it. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> That's the thing, learning to count at the speeds they're going and not letting the music goof you up and figuring out the timing because sometimes they'll do a fraction. They'll go, uh, uh, I have to figure one out. They'll do, I mean, there's simple fractions where they would go one, two, three, Just playing on the you're filling in uh, instead of staying there for the whole bar. Uh, if you don't want to stay there for the whole bar, you that's how you start doing the riffs. You learn you think you think the whole bar to yourself in your head like Let's say it's a four bars that you stay on one note, which would be the easiest you could do. Then you start filling on the last bar. So I'm starting the third bar. One bar left, so you go. So you keep track. And almost everybody I give these spiels to don't want to count. But then they wonder why they can't put a fill on. It's because they don't know where they are because they refuse to count, and they're not feeling it because they're not a born musical genius, so that means you're going to have to count. So now let's say it's only a two-bar pattern, so I don't got to wait so long. So That's how you learn to fill. So sometimes you only fill on the last count of the bar, so the last beat, so you got four beats in a bar, so you're going to go. We did another note on four of the one, two, three, four. Now maybe we do it. Uh, now we're going to do the other note on all three beats and just not the first one. You can do it because I can do it because I'm counting them. I'm not guessing where I am. I know I'm on one here and two, three, and four over there. So that means it's three quarters of the bar. It's a fraction. Three quarters of the bar, we're on D. One quarter. Uh, one quarter we're on A, so same with J and G, G and C. And the golden rule is when you learn these strings up and down, E and F are together. You know, e and F are together, B and C are together. B and C at the seventh and eighth on the first string anyway, and E and F on the open to first. So you go, all the rest get an extra, they get, uh, these are half steps. And all the rest get a whole step where you skip one in between. So, so knowing that rule, it's Let's continue over here. It's A, B and C is together. So you know this is A open. You're on the D string, so D and E is whole, so E and F's together, so, so it's, now we got to go a little further, E, F, D, E, D, F, G, A, B and C up here stays together because of the rule, then D, you're back to the octave. You can learn that on every string, and then pretty soon you know your note names, and you don't got to be like a guitar player that can only go 
Set names. First. Third. Then you can learn the slides. You pick it. You kind of pick. You don't pick the slide. You just pick it. And then it has mo it has noise, music or whatever you want to call it. You gotta pick it first so there's some sound when it moves. Because if you just move it, there's nothing there. You gotta pick it first. Put the slides with the hammers. Now you got a little bit of your tricks. Those are in your toolbox of tricks. And harmonics are tricks. <laughs> harmonics, that was the start to Clock Strikes Down's cheap trick. Then they do that chromatic. <laughs> done preached it's over if you've seen how important it is to count if you wanted to learn fills and uh, and it's very important to be able to get the guitars in your head because that's what you got to play to open a song so if you don't think that you have to hum a song out so if I go like this you just use a uh, I'm using a dao, a little short one syllable word. And you just pick one and then you use that for every time. And and like cocaine was da 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 and when you scratch a string or wait just go tick 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 like a hi hat. And and then when you're waiting for a hi-hat, like, I gotta wait eight th things, so I just, to myself, even inside my head, go tick, 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 tick. Now you know four, Don, you can crash. And in between those are two, so inside your mind, you go tick, tick, or say it out loud. When you're learning, it doesn't hurt. Tick, tick. tune by ear, learn patterns by ear, put patterns together, do the hammer-on tricks, do the slide tricks, uh, learn some picking patterns, learn the uh, strokes, different ones of like, put two together, uh, play all the basic picking patterns, so when it, if you hear one in an album and they're putting two together to make a combination riff, you can get it right away, because you, uh, because you already practiced it, then you'll hear it. Uh, uh, remember, uh, to keep track of the pattern, uh, you gotta get the small count to where you don't gotta think about it. That way you can keep track of what bar you're on. So when you're on the fourth bar, and the fourth time when they do something different, you're totally thinking of that. You're not thinking about the exact little picking pattern and the pattern. You want to get that so you can do that by just reaction. And then you can, then the only thing you got left to do is keep your picking pattern way back in the back of your mind, uh, but keep track of uh, how many times you do everything. Then you know, and then that's how you work into your next piece. If there is a next piece, that's why I say start out with a one pattern song. And then, and then when you start a three pattern song, you're going to have to learn to put one pattern into the next. It's not very hard. You just play out the one pattern and start the next pattern. Uh, and sometimes they just ride it out when one starts. You'll finish an intro and you just go...
spiel. I don't know how long it's went, but I'll post it, and if you learn something from it, yay. This is the end. Uh, like if you like it, subscribe.